Today we are going to be talking about the five stocks that I see as underpriced, aka oversold for April 2019. As a trader, a large portion of my time is spent scanning and researching stocks that are below fair value or oversold so that I can hold them until they are overbought aka overvalued. I just completed my list for April, so I thought that I'd present to you five of the most promising stocks that I see in terms of being undervalued for April. But as always, the only thing I ask of you in return for this video is that you hit that beautiful and charming like button, and also if you see value, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more short, sweet, and simplified videos on how to trade the stock market. Okay, so we're going to be starting by talking about CGC. Just want to give you a quick warning. As a trader, I make my execution decisions based off real minute-by-minute -minute data, and you should too. But the reason that I research stocks even before the market opens and times weeks before is because by researching stocks that are likely to fit my trading criteria, this allows me to take advantages of opportunities when they present themselves live. For example, if I know a stock has a lot of upward potential at close on, say, a Friday, and then on Monday or Tuesday I start seeing signs, early warning signs of a reversal, that allows me to capture that opportunity, whereas otherwise I wouldn't have had the chance. Another key with these stocks is always buying into price strength. If you're buying into stocks specifically because they're oversold, you need to check yourself. That's akin to buying a sick or dying animal on the side of the road. You need to see signs of a recovery. And waiting to see signs of a recovery is so important, especially with the current market condition. For example, on Friday, the overall market dragged down a lot of the great stocks that we otherwise would have played. So just because a stock is on this list or you think is oversold, it doesn't really make much of a difference because it needs to recover in the near future. If it doesn't recover in the near future, it doesn't really matter to us as traders if it's oversold or not. You could make a case for longer term positions, but that's not what I'm here for. Thus, you need to make sure, have a plan and make sure to see signs of a reversal if you're going to be buying into stocks that are oversold. But I think the beauty is that the stocks on this list will give you a little bit more of an idea of what to look for. Now, CGC displayed my comeback king pattern over all of March. Now, for folks who have watched our channel before, you know that the comeback king is where you see this constant overselling and overbuying over and over again within the same time period. We love this pattern because it means that when we identify it, we can get in when it's oversold and sell out when it's overbought and then make a profit. But in any case, we see this pattern for the month of March, and we are now seeing it near the oversold line. This is really a beautiful setup, but we are going to need to see those intraday signs of a reversal. If it just keeps selling off, that would signal a break of pattern, and that's not going to be very useful for us. So we need to make sure that we are able to identify the trend reversal before taking a position. If it does, we should continue to see this pattern take place in April. Okay, so the next stock that we have is BA. So BA has gotten beaten down like a rabid dog. It started with the trending down with the overall market, but when news broke about their two planes of the same model crashing, it really just took a turn for the worse. Fingers started getting pointed at them because two planes from the same manufacturer was a little bit suspicious in terms of a safety issue for the overall company. So fingers were pointed at them and that just totally killed the share price. Compiled with the fact that many countries started grounding their planes and that was just a recipe for disaster. But there's of course no reason to believe that the many other planes that the company has sold and continues to manufacture will have the same trend. They're not all going to start crashing. Thus, there's no reason to believe that this is part of a broader trend for the company, and thus the overselling is another example of an overreaction to bad news. This is similar to what happened with United a little while back. The video broke of that passenger being dragged off the airline, and that caused an uproar and massive sell-off in share price. Now, this wasn't as bad of a story as the two planes crashing, and United obviously doesn't manufacture their own planes, but it's a similar situation in a lot of ways. The stock sold off but recovered quickly and the long-term value was much higher. The reason is because at the end of the day, the actual value underneath the company, the actual value of the asset, was not any different. It hadn't changed just because of this bad news. The only thing they did was the short-term emotional fluctuations of how the masses felt about the companies. As we know, news within the market is either considered really good or really bad, which makes investors push stocks to an extreme in one way or the other. But as we know, stocks fluctuate massively in the short run, but converge to their long-term value over time. Two planes going down doesn't really impact the long-term value of BA. But anyways, as traders, what we care about is getting in when it's discounted, and this is a great opportunity for us nearing the end of March and entering into April. 
It's long-term oversold on the RSI, which has a history of increasing rapidly within a few days to weeks, and thus this would be worth watching for a swing position. The only issue I could see is if we see a general sell-off in the overall market, we may see a delay in the performance of this position. This is a stock that is heavily exposed to the overall market performance as it's heavily weighted by many of the top index funds and industry-leading financial instruments, which could create an issue if we are on the cliff in terms of the overall market. Nonetheless, we see that upward potential from 362 to 446, which is pretty good, and it's not crazy to expect a closer to rapid recovery since we have seen pretty rapid recoveries or pretty rapid spikes in share price in terms of a couple days to weeks when we're looking at the broader term chart. Okay, so Tesla is nearing that long-term support level that we like to look for. This is another example of one of my favorite patterns, and that is the comeback king. And again, this is the overselling and overbuying within the same time period. But in any case, this pattern became quite weak towards the end of the period, as we saw a failure to reach overbought during this specific time period. We also have a general downtrend, but what I'm going to be looking for is it reaching even lower. Ideally, long-term support at 245, 247-ish. It's at that point that I'd feel good taking a position. Of course, because we do have this general downtrend, I'd also want to make sure we got in after seeing signs of a reversal, since buying in when it's at support but not showing signs of holding or reversing isn't logical. Again, back to my sick animal analogy. Would you buy a sick animal with no signs of recovery? Probably not. Probably not. So I'd like to see that crossing over the SMA intraday and that confirmation with that following candlestick holding above it. A lot of things that give you that extra edge that a lot of folks don't take advantage of is the idea of making sure to get a good deal intraday. While I am focusing on Tesla for a swing position at the actual time of entry, I'm also going to want to make sure it's below fair value on the RSI to give me that extra edge. The more you pay for the stock, the less edge you have, the more risk you're exposed to, and the less upward potential, of course. As we know, being oversold on a larger time span isn't the same as being oversold on a smaller one. The larger is obviously more important for swing trading, but we want to focus on keeping the odds as much in our favor as possible, and if we can get it oversold on the day as well, then we have that extra edge. Okay, so AMD is another one. This is getting awfully close to oversold, but not quite there yet. The overall market push downwards on Friday did this one in. But when you are looking at this in terms of the year, we do see that consistent upward pattern. Of course, this is still considered overbought when looking at the longer term time chart. So unlike with Tesla, we don't have that extra margin of error or upward gravitational pull, but we do have more rapid price movements, which could be helpful for us in April. Okay, so the last stock is going to get me into trouble, but it's FIT, and it really does seem to be oversold. I don't know that I believe in the longevity of their company, but taking a look at the price action, we do see this massive drop around their earnings and a bit of an upward correction after that. But after that hit, it's been pretty steady at around 550 to the $6 range. With that gravitational pull of this consistent higher resistance, if we do see those warning signs of an uptrend, I'd be very convinced to take a position in April. In any case, if you have any questions after watching this video or, again, would like access to nightly watch lists and to see what everybody else is trading, you can reach out to us on the Zip Trader Circle Facebook group. I put the link in the description. And if you join the group, you get access to the Discord. And, and aside from Zip Trader Circle, we also have access to the Discord chat now where I post nightly watch lists which are the same ones that I post on the Zip Trader Circle, but it's great to have them here as well. You can also go to the main square. And the awesome thing about this is when you're trading live, you can see exactly what's going on within the market, what other people are trading, what exactly like the biggest momentum plays are. People post different trades. People post different things that oversold. People post oversold trades, different penny stocks or biotech news that they're watching. And we all share a bunch of different resources and growth strategies and, you know, overall marijuana thoughts and whatnot. But, you know, I think it's a really great opportunity. A lot of people are asking me, oh, why do you not have a Discord chat? So I thought, oh, this is a good way for people to get in touch with all of the live trades that are happening on any given day. So in any case, and it's also a great way you could private message me or private message some of the other traders to ask what they think about certain stocks or share it with the overall group, which I think is amazing. Now, again, in order to get access to this, all you have to do is go to the Facebook circle, join the Facebook circle, and then there's a link, and there's a link attached to my daily announcements. 
attached to the top and you just click that and then you're in it's a great they really a great platform a lot of you are probably familiar with this but in any case it's really an awesome thing to join but in any case i hope this video was helpful have a great day folks and i'll see you in the next video